I want you to listen to a congressman that can only be described as a coward and as pathetic in these serious times that he cannot go against a traitor to this country. Check this out, and then we'll go ahead and take it on the other side. A year ago in a few days, you came on this show and I asked you about January 6th and you said the following. I'm going to continue to listen uh, to those 74 million uh, voices that voted for him. But of the 74 million, uh, the the small percentage that stormed the Capitol and engaged in that insurrection that were Trump supporters, I will tell them there's no place in the Republican Party for you. Here we are nearly a a year later, Congressman, and the former president put out a release today that said to watch Biden speaking is very hurtful to many people. They're the ones who tried to stop the peaceful transfer with a rigged election. Never forget the crime of the 2020 presidential election. Never give up. That's the former president. How did it get so off kilter here in your party? No, I will tell you, I I don't know. uh, Other than I continue to be a voice to say, if you believe violence and engaging in what happened on January 6th is the way to resolve your dispute uh, with an election, uh, I turn my back on you. What it's going to take, Chuck, is it's going to take leadership. And it's going to take leadership on both sides of the aisle to say, you know what, enough is enough of this extremism. I have to say, I hear the words, well, it's incumbent on both sides of the aisle. There's one party that seems to take what happened on January 6th seriously, and there's one party that does not seem to. Isn't this incumbent on Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell? It's incumbent upon all leaders in Washington, D.C. to step forward, to condemn rightfully what happened on January 6th, like I'm condemning right now. What about the run I mean, what the former president did. I, I mean, I look at January 6th, and on that day, I wanted to believe it was a bunch of misled hooligans who didn't fully appreciate what was going on. And the more we learn, it's like, no, there was a little more concerted effort here and a lot more organized effort to try to overturn this election. But it's not 74 million people that voted for Donald Trump, as we were talking about a year ago. A vocal minority of extremists took it into their own thought process and power to do what they did. And to me, that is what has to be objected to. You are co-chair of Trump's presidential campaign. Do you regret that position now, considering his behavior? No. Why? I I don't, because he brought the disruption to Washington, D.C. that needs to be brought. I still respect the voice that he brought to Washington and the forgotten men and women that he listened to. Would you trust him again with the keys to this democracy? You know, I leave that to the American people. You have a vote in that. Your constituents ask you, I do. are you willing to hand the keys to the democracy to this man again? I want I want to have an open and contest on ideas and inspiration. If President Trump is the candidate that's representing the Republican Party, I will support him. So you're willing to put the, I, I want to repeat what the former president said today, Congressman. He says they're the ones who tried to stop the peaceful transfer of power with a rigged election. He's calling the 2020 election a a crime. I believe it was a crime. And Chuck, that will be part of the process. You know, this sounds like a lot of elected Republicans I talk to who are afraid of of telling their supporters what they don't want to hear, which is that Donald Trump is lying to them. Have you told your supporters that Donald Trump is lying to them about the 2020 election? I'll be very clear with you, Chuck. I believe the election of 2020 uh, was a duly held election. The results were duly certified. You used the word fair just now, but you wouldn't use it in describing the 2020 election. You said duly and not fair. And it's a it's a distinction that I notice a lot of elected Republicans who are trying to appease Trump or Trump supporters Mm -hmm. say, why do you do that? Well, I will tell you, in 2020, it, it was a fair election in the sense that The rules using COVID were changed and the Democrats were, to their credit, they were much better at getting their voters to the poll. Again, it sounds like you're trying to put an asterisk on the 2020 election, which only feeds this conspiracy nonsense that is wrecking this country. Why did we have what we had here a year ago was this conspiratorial nonsense that leads people to the idea that there's something to this. There was nothing to this. It's not conspiracy. They changed the rules legally. Does it bother you at all that the Republican Party is no longer a conservative party, but a cult of personality right now? I mean, I disagree with that assessment. I mean, uh, I have to give it to Chuck Todd. He really let uh, the Congressman Reid have it this time. You know, several times he appeases Republicans, but this time he let him have it. And what the Congressman has proven is that even at even in retirement, because I don't think he's serving another term, even in retirement, Donald Trump has a stronghold on them because they're looking at their future. They want to make sure that they do absolutely nothing.
to disrupt their particular presence in the Republican, uh, Republican establishment. So what's the Republican establishment right now? Donald Trump. I think the only solution ultimately we're going to have is for those that are never Trumpers and the other Republicans that are sensible, that really want to maintain democracy, for them to form another party, a party that of their own, in which for the time being, they ally with Democrats until that separation is needed again after our democracy has once again been secured. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.